Well, welcome everyone to Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. I'm your host, Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. On today's show, The Bond Alternative, part one in our series on the alternative solutions of life insurance with best-selling author, popular platform speaker, and nationally recognized retirement expert, Tom Hagno. Welcome to the first segment, Tom. Hey, great to be with you, Steve. I got to say, um, you know, when we talked on another show, we talked about economic solutions of life. It's really great. People were really surprised at all the options you have and all the alternatives. But we're really into alternative land on this show. Right. Let's talk about bonds, because right now, bonds have been play. They've been a great play. I'm not going to kid you. The last decade, they even though with the market, the, the interest rates going down, the bond yields have been very up uh, happening. But now, with the Fed ticking rates up, everybody's getting nervous again. Yeah, so I mean, we've really been in a 30-year bull market for bonds because bonds, you know, interest rates have been, have been coming down and so the value of bonds goes mm -hmm. up when interest rates go down. What I do when I talk about life insurance alternative solutions, I wrote a newsletter and the title of the newsletter was the 60-40 portfolio is dead, long live life insurance and annuities. And my whole point of this is that if you look at the average person out there, even a very sophisticated investor, and I, you know, I, I get in front of some very sophisticated people and they say, well, life insurance, they kind of poo poo. And I say, well, let me show you why sophisticated people buy life insurance. The average person out there has invested somewhere around 60% stock and 40% bonds. That's the way that most mm -hmm. advisors are putting people. And I say the 40% bond portfolio is really dead. And here's why I say that. Right now, the upside on bonds is one or two, 3% mm -hmm. at the most, you know, really on, on the upside of bonds. But the downside is huge because the way bonds work is if interest rates go up, the value of bonds goes down. So the upside is very little, one to two, 3%. The downside is huge because mm -hmm. if interest rates go up, the value could fall 30, 40, 50%. A lot of people don't understand. You could lose 40, 50% of your money in government bonds. They say, well, they're guaranteed. Yeah, if you hold them for the whole time. But if you, if you sell it in between, you could lose a lot of money. And my whole point here is for young people, what young people should be doing as part of their bond portfolio, as a bond substitute, put in permanent life insurance. Mm -hmm. A good whole life policy fits great in there. You get a bond type return, three, four, five percent right? But if interest rates go up, what happens to the value of whole life? It goes up too. It doesn't go down. Mm -hmm. So you don't have that inverse uh, interest rate risk if you use a whole life type policy or a permanent policy. Mm -hmm. Now for older people, pay, people age say 60, 65 or older, then that's where income annuities make sense. Put a lifetime income annuity where you get mm -hmm. a AAA rated bond with a triple C rated yield with zero mm -hmm. standard deviation. That's really how a income annuity functions inside of a portfolio. Mm -hmm. So w if you're young, you want to use life insurance as at least a portion of the, I'm not saying you have to put 40% of your portfolio mm -hmm. in permanent life insurance, but what if you said out of that 40%, I'm going to put 10% or 20% into life insurance. Mm -hmm. It's a great bond substitute, even for very sophisticated investors. And of course, you know, history is never a, a, an indicator of future returns, but if you saw the historicity of whole life contracts, especially the top three or four carriers, those numbers are spectacular. Plus, you've done some research on, on the bonds recently and mm -hmm. how the, the life insurance has done very well against bonds. Yeah, so when you look at everybody that seems to have conservative people seem to mark their portfolios against the 10-year treasury, which I think is ultra uber conservative, but okay. But when you look at those returns and you take some of the top carriers in the United States, they've been putting out some pretty big numbers, five, five and a quarter dividends. And those dividends, until they cross over to bases, those can even come free. But think about this, and this is my thought. We're always looking at the bond market, and we're looking at the municipal bond market. We're trying to see the highest rated. And some of the carriers that Tommy and I suggest and recommend often are some of the top rated carriers. They're called blue chip companies, and there's a reason for it, because their balance sheets are golden. Yeah. They have huge financials. So if you're looking at this as saying, Steve, I've just never heard of this as a bond alternative life insurance, you should really look at this and we'll show you the math and the history right. to show you why we say and think the way we do. I'll just throw some numbers up here. And you see, a lot of people, what they don't like about whole life, Steve, is they think they got to pay for their whole life. Well, you need to know there's a lot of companies out there that will do a 10 pay whole life, they'll mm -hmm. do a seven pay whole life, they'll do a 12 pay whole life so that you can you can pick how many years you want to pay it. You mm -hmm. don't, you're not stuck paying this thing for your whole life. In fact, that's what got me in, in the insurance business. I'll tell you a quick story. I was a company commander out of Fort Ord, California in the 7th Infantry Division and there was somebody going through my unit selling whole life insurance to my soldiers. And at the time, I was a buy, term, and invest the difference guy. And I said, bring him to me, because when you're a commander, you can say that. Bring him to me. I thought he was out there ripping off my soldiers. And, I, and he needed my birth date. I said, I'll give him my birth date. So he came and he ran a policy for me. 
a seven pay whole life policy, which I couldn't stand at the time because I would buy term and invested difference and whole life was a rip off policy and all this stuff. And so I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, I put in this money. So after seven years, I put in, you know, at the time it was like $7,000 and my cash value is $7,000 and a little more. And my, my life insurance went up. And then every year after that, the cash value went up and the life insurance went up, but I didn't have to pay any more premiums. I said, why would anybody buy term insurance if you could buy a policy like this? I mean, this sounds like it's almost too good to be true. I said, you get paid to sell this season. I get paid a lot to sell this. <laughs> I could sell that. And so mm -hmm. I got into the insurance mm -hmm. business. So let me just give you an example. Now, these are some big numbers. I don't mm -hmm. want to scare people. This is a 55-year-old man. I picked me. 55-year-old <laughs> male, million-dollar whole life policy, all right? The premium on a 10 pay is about $57,000 a year. Now that sounds like a lot, oh, it's crazy. Okay, well you can, if you want a $100,000 whole life, you can get it for a lot less, all right? But I just showed this because after 10 years, you put in about $573,000, okay? The cash value on this thing is 581,000 mm -hmm. and that the death benefit has gone up to 29000 and after that it keeps growing. So I mean you can see the cash value keeps growing, the death benefit keeps growing. Now dividends aren't guaranteed but mm -hmm. for most of these companies that we talk about they've been paid for, you know, 100 mm -hmm. years or 70 years or whatever. They're very reliable and you can take a lot of that money out tax free. Mm -hmm. All the money up to the 573,000 you can take out tax free. It's only above that that you didn't even have mm -hmm. to report. And if you want to borrow it out, you can borrow out the money above that. So what I'm saying is that you're not stuck paying all your life. You just, pay, I, in this case, would pay for 10 years, be done, have a, a lot of cash, mm -hmm. have a lot of policy that's there. And people say, okay, well, what about like a 40-year-old woman? Okay, well, the premium's a lot lower. Now, why are premiums lower on women? Number one, they live longer, so the mm -hmm. premiums are lower. And plus, this is a 40-year-old versus a 55-year-old. This is showing a 40-year-old woman put in in 29,000. She's put in over 10 years, 292,000. Her cash value is 331,000. The death benefit's over a million dollars, and it keeps growing. And so mm -hmm. these are the kinds of things that I think uh, work very well mm -hmm. as a bond substitute. Now, one thing you, you uh, I wanted to address because I don't remember you saying it just in the last two minutes was, yes, the dividends are there, and yes, you know, of course they're they're not guaranteed, but they've been performing well. But a lot of people are comforted in shock value by going to the guaranteed cash value side. Right. That is a lock. So so that part of the ledger is for sure. Yeah. So people kind of like in a there's a guarantee. Way, and, yeah. The way these work is there's a guaranteed cash value, then there's a non-guaranteed with the dividends, mm -hmm. and that's that's what's that's what's showing over here. But you know, most of these companies have have gone very close to their their non-guaranteed, mm -hmm. and and if if you're conservative, just use the guarantees because that's all guaranteed out the door if they even pay no dividends. Yeah. In fact, by the way, if you're really a bond aficionado and you look at the guaranteed column on this, just ask yourself one question. And it's a big one. What's the beta risk on the guaranteed column of my cash? The answer, zero. Right. So it's really, it's really, really important. Think about this other thing, too. Municipal bonds are only as good as the city that's issuing them. Like, well, I'm just doing a city. You want to really look at the quality of the ratings. Right. And if you compare those and just put the same ratings against the life insurance carrier, as the same as the municipality, put them side by side, see if you can get comfortable with the rates of return and they're tax-free. By the way, a little shocker, not all municipal bonds, not all municipal bonds are tax-free at the federal level or the state level or even the city level. So you got to figure out what entity that you're buying it from, actually what's the tax issues. Not only that, every single tax-free bond counts towards your uh, Social Security taxation. Boy. Many seniors don't know this. I mean, when I was an advisor, I helped a lot of seniors reduce or eliminate the tax on their Social Security benefits simply by moving them out of tax-free bonds into other mm -hmm. vehicles. So. Yeah, keep in mind what, what Tommy says is really important because... All your income from municipal bonds flows over to your Social Security for visual income test, all of it. So don't be sitting there saying, hey, it's tax-free. It could be causing an ordinary income tax event on your Social Security. Yeah, and up to 85% of your Social Security benefits will be taxed. Wow. To me, that's, a, that's probably news to a lot of people that are watching our show. Listen, don't forget to watch our next segment of Business Strategies, part two of our series on the alternative solutions of life insurance. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or financial advisor. You've been watching Steve Savant's money. Game of the game.